The NFL season is back, which means the Chiefs finding lucky ways to win is back too. And that's exactly what happened in week one against the Ravens. It was an absolutely incredible game to start the year. Coming down to the final play, it looked like Isaiah likely scored, but he was out of bounds. <laughs> and the Chiefs won 27 to 20. Week one is always weird, and it is really hard to evaluate teams after a single game, but we did learn a lot. We got just an absolutely amazing game to start off the season. I don't think we really could have asked for more. The offenses were rolling fast. The Ravens immediately drove down the field and scored despite a few odd illegal formation penalties that ended up being, I thought, pretty one-sided throughout the game. Most of the calls did go the Chiefs' way, which, you know, always does feel like a trend. John Harbaugh was even caught mouthing about how the calls weren't being made both ways, and I agree. The officials also granted a timeout to the Chiefs that defensive coordinator Steve Spagnolio called, which isn't allowed. It has to be the head coach. It sure does feel like calls always seem to go the Chiefs' way these days. The Ravens did punch it in first still on a five-yard Derrick Henry touchdown run. Man, he and Lamar. Lamar Jackson together is going to be a problem. Having to contain Lamar was hard enough. And now the Ravens have a gigantic beast running back too. Lamar is still the top rusher. At least that's exactly what it looked like in week one. Lamar ended up rushing 16 times. He had 122 yards. King Henry ran the ball 13 times for 46 yards. But I am betting on him being insane in the red zone all year. The Chiefs did immediately respond with a touchdown to tie it. And it it was actually Xavier Worthy from 21 yards out. The Bills traded that pick to the Chiefs for Worthy, and I think they'll regret it. It worked out so well with Mahomes. Worthy ran a 4-2-140 at the Combine, and on his first NFL touch, he scored. It was a reverse, and the Chiefs blocked well, and he hit that second gear. He did also end up catching one of the easiest touchdowns you'll see in the fourth quarter, which ended up being the game winner. A lot of people were hype on Twitter about how he scored again. And I hate to break it to you, but any NFL wide receiver could have scored there. It was a complete defensive breakdown. The Chiefs did win by seven. And I think a lot of the swings that could have gone the Ravens way to change the result were really in the first half. They forced a KC punt and then Lamar fumbled the next play. That led to a field goal and Harrison Butker tacked on another one soon after. Zay Flowers got stuffed on a fourth down for a turnover on downs. And Justin Tucker missed a field goal from 53. He really might be washed, sadly. He is missing left and right on deep kicks now and clearly it wasn't only a last year problem Patrick Mahomes did throw a pick that led to a Ravens field goal late in the half to make it 13 to 10 it was a good first half and at that point it felt like it could still go either way the Chiefs scored the only points of the third quarter on an Isaiah Pacheco goal line touchdown and there are two things here that I have to point out for one Mahomes is up joining the play helping the push I love seeing that not only from a quarterback but a guy who is proven and making a ton of money like him. Then there's two, and I can't believe this play wasn't blown dead. Pacheco goes backwards at one point. It felt like a goal line stand. In real time, I just couldn't believe the play wasn't whistled. Just another weird Chiefs benefit, I guess. The Chiefs were definitely in the driver's seat to start the fourth quarter, but the Ravens struck on a big Isaiah Likely play. He was great and did a lot more than Mark Andrews, that's for sure, unfortunately for my fantasy team. Of course, his biggest play didn't count. Worthy ended up scoring with 10-25 remaining to put the Chiefs up 27 to 17, but the Ravens kept fighting. Justin Tucker made it a seven point game with 454 remaining. And then the Ravens made a big stop. Mahomes even caught his own pass, but the Chiefs had to punt. The Ravens had a chance. And in those final few plays, it was hard to watch Lamar. He looked awful. He threw a bad ball to Likely and then an even worse, horrible throw to Zay Flowers. He was wide open. Then there was the final play of the game and it looked like Likely caught it, but he was out of bounds. I don't even know how you could argue that he wasn't. His toe was out and the Ravens lost. If he was in bounds, it looked like Harbaugh wanted to go for two. That would have been so awesome.
awesome to see, but he was out of bounds. The Chiefs survive. Overall, it was a great game to start the season. It was perfect. It was everything we could have asked for. It wasn't a blowout. It was two of the best teams in football, two of the best teams in football last year that have high expectations once again. And it was exciting the whole way through. There was good defense. There was good offense. And obviously the ending. If you stayed up for the whole game, you were absolutely pumped for the end of that. When Isaiah likely scored that touchdown, that wasn't a touchdown. It was so exciting. Me and my friends were going crazy. It was like, no way that just happened. Harbaugh's over there yelling too. And then you watch three play and you realize that he was definitely out of bounds. I 100% think he was out of bounds, but it was exciting. And it came down to the wire right there in the fourth quarter. It couldn't have been any better. Both teams proved a lot, but at the end of the day, the Chiefs won. And somehow they covered minus three in the most bizarre fashion. If you had Ravens plus three, I'm so sorry. That is such a tough beat. One of the biggest storylines all season is going to be whether or not the Chiefs can be the first team in an NFL history to three P. Even when Kansas City has slipped up, Andy Reid and Mahomes find ways to win. Mahomes already has three rings and it's hard to say anyone else is more likely to win this season. The Chiefs are a well-oiled machine that won't stop and the dynasty is rolling. Short of a major injury, it would be a shock if the Chiefs didn't make a deep postseason run again. But can the Chiefs win the Super Bowl again? The receiving weapons are even better than recent seasons. Rasheed Rice is developing and he had 100 yards against Baltimore. Should he be playing? That's a big question, but he is even with a felony charge. Xavier Worthy is talented and Hollywood Brown didn't even play on Thursday night. Of course, Travis Kelsey. It's hard to bet against the Chiefs. The line is good. Andy Reid and Matt Nagy are geniuses and the defense is good too, led by Chris Jones and Steve Spagnuolo won't leave. He's too busy winning championships. The Chiefs are the favorites again to win the Super Bowl and how could they not be? I don't think anybody's going to bet against the Chiefs until we see the Chiefs actually lose. Remember last year, they had some bad losses. They had that loss to the Raiders. They had losses where you win. This Chiefs team isn't as good as past seasons, and I don't think that they can win another Super Bowl. And of course, the playoffs come. They win another Super Bowl. They look fantastic, and it's hard to see them not do that again this year. When you have Patrick Mahomes, it completely changes the rules. He is the best player in football, and even yesterday, you watch him, and you see him even times when he makes the bad read and puts himself in a bad spot. He finds his way out of it. He finds an open receiver. He makes the big play. There's a reason the Chiefs have been so good, even without great receiver talent and trading away Tyreek Hill. And it's because of Patrick Mahomes and him alongside Andy Reid and Matt Nagy back there. I just don't think that anybody is going to bet against the Chiefs until we actually see the Chiefs lose. I will believe it when I see it, but Patrick Mahomes is so good and that team around him is also so talented. And I think he actually has good wide receiver weapons this year. I think Rasheed Rice is great. Should he be playing? Probably not, but I think he's a good player. I think Juju Smith-Schuster, remember he was a top receiver for them not too long ago. He's back on the roster. Who knows what he still has left in him. There are just so many good players on that team. And Patrick Mahomes makes good players look great. And that's exactly why the Chiefs look great week in, week out. And it's hard to say that they're not the Super Bowl favorite this year. Of course they are, but can they actually win a third straight? Three-peats are so difficult in sports. We've never had one in football. It's physical. It's violent. It's tough to do in any sport. If I had to say right now, the Chiefs are by far the favorite, but I'm going to vote against the three-peat. It's just so hard to win three straight. At some point, somebody has to figure out the Chiefs. No one has yet, but this is the year that I think somebody else can beat them. I just don't know that that's the Ravens. If there was a team to stop the Chiefs, especially last season, it would have been the Ravens. They did look like the best team in the league for a while. Baltimore lost some dudes though. Mike McDonald is probably the biggest loss. He's the Seahawks head coach now, but was a fantastic defensive coordinator for the Ravens. Zach Orr is the new DC. The Ravens do still have some great players on the defensive side of the ball, like Roquan Smith, Marlon Humphrey, and Kyle Hamilton. Then the offense has Lamar. Sometimes that's enough, but add Derrick Henry, and the rushing attack is a defensive nightmare. Zay Flowers is the clear top receiver. It's a good roster, but there are some new questions for the Ravens this year, and they still can't beat the Chiefs. I kind of like the Ravens. I like Lamar Jackson. I got to watch him a bunch when he was in the ACC. Zay Flowers and other ACC guys. It's a lot of guys that I've watched for a very long time. Me and Darren actually went and saw the Ravens play the Texans. <laughs> in the playoffs last year, the atmosphere was great. We love it up in Baltimore. It was a ton of fun. So the Ravens are a team that I really do kind of root for. I'd love to see them win. I just don't know that I believe in them this year. You know, losing McDonald really, I think, is going to hurt. Remember, they had some top guys just leave. It's hard to keep a lot of guys around that you're paying a ton of money. And I think we're really going to see that as the 
season goes on with the Ravens. But in week one, I don't think they missed a step. A couple silly mistakes go their way. They beat the Chiefs. The Ravens are a good football team. I don't know how far that's going to take them. But if this week one contest was any sign of what is to come, the Ravens are a seriously good team. They can be one play away from beating the Chiefs. I think this is going to be a good year for both of these teams. And we're going to see if the Chiefs do get beat. If somebody does dethrone the Chiefs, could it be the Ravens? They couldn't beat them in week one, but it's a long season. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see these two again in the playoffs.